Welcome back to Grafter Branch Ministry. As always, Scott of Europe here. If this is your first time tuning into Grafter Branch Ministry though, welcome. This is a channel where I myself and my wife Hannah Herb dedicate our lives to studying the King James Bible on various different topics. Please grab your King James Bible as we talk about spiritual fornication today. Open up to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 reads, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her, her fornication. Okay, so the kings are committing fornication with her setting up rule by her means, and then the inhabitants of the world are made drunk by that fornication. They go along with it, they don't fight against it, and they enjoy it, and they're sedated by it. Verse three, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones, and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and a abominations of the earth. Now, real quick, I want to emphasize in Luke 16, 15, one of the things that's called an abomination here in the earth is anything that's highly esteemed amongst men. Luke chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed amongst men is abomination in the sight of God. Okay, That which is highly esteemed amongst men is an abomination in the sight of God. <sighs> and yes, I believe that Mystery Babylon is the Catholic Church. Uh, some would say, like verse 9, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Oh, well, it's a city that sits on seven hills, not on seven mountains. Well, if you haven't already seen the mysteries of Revelation uh, study, turn to Luke 9.28 and compare it with verse 37. You'll see that they go up into a mountain and then they come down from a hill. A mountain and hill is one and the same with the Word of God. And even further, at the end of this passage here, it says, And the woman which thou sawest, in verse 18, is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth and all the kings of the earth all the ambassador other uh, not ambassadors the prime ministers excuse me and the presidents of different nations they all bow the knee to the catholic church they all go and kiss the ring of the pope and they pay homage now they're committing fornication and they ha they set up their rule by the way of the catholic church even the different church buildings, okay, different church buildings today, they go according to the same nonsense. And though they call themselves Protestant, they're not protesting against Catholicism. Rather, they're going right along with it, and they go and get a 501c3 here in America, uh, whatever it is in your respected nation, that uh, the tax exemption, their uh, religious organization, code that they sign up with the government so that they're recognized yet yeah, you don't actually legally have to do that at least here in america and i'm pretty sure in most other places you can worship in your own home and have your neighbors come over and you don't need to have an official organization of course oh well we're not we don't have commendation of man you don't have proper documentation to prove that you can preach the word who is our authority is it man or is it god um, do you savor the things that be of men? Do you want to go to one of these church buildings? Okay. Oh, it has 900 people. Oh, what? Why? Here, here's an argument that I always hear. Why is it wrong to have a good local church, a church family? It's not. But when that church family 
has a building that's owned by the government and that is registered with the government to be a religious organization so that they can have their tax write-offs and that the pastor has a guaranteed check coming in if they don't make enough don't uh, don't get enough donations that month that they can keep paying their mortgage their life debt that they have on a house that they actually get with the VA loan here in America yes pastors have access to a VA loan something that only military personnel and government personnel have access to a certain type of loan which is they pay no money down in order to get it but pastors have an access to that as they sign up with a 501c3 and then the people they say oh well we can't they they have the right to do that sure but they're committing spiritual fornication they're giving unto caesar what is god's Okay, if it is something that is of God's, let's go to uh, let's go to Luke chapter 16 or excuse me, Matthew 22, Matthew 22, 17 through 21. And the simple thing that I will say here is you don't legally have to have a 501c3. You don't have to go and go and register any church building or exactly everything that you do with the government and these church building idolaters these pastors that have gone to a a bible college so that they can have their certification from man which is highly esteemed amongst men Okay, they have their commendation, a little documentation that says, oh, you can preach the word of God out of any perversion, any other version of the word of God. And they don't actually hold the standard and they're taught not to hold the standard. Oh, don't be judgmental kind of thing in these different Bible colleges. And they're not actually working for God. They're living by what's highly esteemed amongst men. And then they willingly sign over what should be God gods even calling it the house of god the house of worship for god but they're signing it over to the government those buildings if it has a 501c3 is government property please look into it if you're not familiar if you're unsure on what i'm saying and ask your pastor if you're still going to a church are we a 501c3 church guarantee you that you are if you're in another country just ask are we registered with the government to be a tax-exempt organization Guaranteed that you are if you're in a building that is that is established and you Google Maps churches in the area and it pops up Yes, it is registered with the government And you don't have to do that God can draw in people Plenty enough and you don't have to register What is God's and give it unto Caesar? Go into that passage in Matthew 22, verse 17. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny, and he saith unto them, Whose is the image and superscription? And they say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. So, yeah, the money is Caesar's. Go ahead, pay your taxes. <laughs> that's what that's meaning. But the things that are God's, okay, the house of worship, the house of God that they claim, oh, this place is a place of prayer for God we come here to do service unto God but then they sign it over to Caesar they're giving unto God what is or giving unto Caesar what is God's excuse me and they're committing abomination they're committing spiritual fornication not having trust in God to provide for them but they're putting their trust and hope in man they desire and savor after the things that be of men Satan does that. Go with me to Matthew chapter 16 now. Matthew 16, verse 
Matthew chapter 16, and we're looking at verse 23. It reads, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savoreth not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Oh, well, we want a good local church family. And then the pastor saying, oh, well, I want to make sure that I have my paycheck. And the people say, oh, he deserves to do that. Oh, well, we got to pay our tithe. We got to pay our tithe. Even though, you know, the tithe was something in the law. I'm going to be doing a study on this here shortly, but the tithe was the tenth part given unto the Levitical priest, the tribe of Levite, for their inheritance because they didn't get a portion of the land. They got a tenth of what everybody else that got a portion of the land made. And mind you, it was the best of the best. And then even the Levites, when they got their tithe, would burn and offer up to God, sacrificing it, not just donating it somewhere else, but literally burning it up to make that sacrifice unto God with the tenth of the tenth that they had received, giving the best of the best unto God. So tell me if you have a pastor at your church that when he receives $100, he takes and exchanges it and gets $10 and lights it on fire and sacrifices it unto God. Then that is actually following the law of the tithe. Tithing is not mentioned not once after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, by the way. And these people, they commit spiritual fornication, following after the things that be of men, following after the laws of the land, and they'll say, oh, well, what about, what about Luke? Or, or what about Romans 13? What about Romans 13? Okay, let's go there. Paul tells us to render service or render tribute unto whom tribute is due, just like Jesus did. Verse 7 Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Okay, owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Owe no man anything. The very next verse on that, which a lot of these mega church buildings and many other smaller church buildings, they don't actually own their church building. The government does. When they sign it over to a 501c3. The government can come into that building anytime they want, listen to what the preacher is saying, and if they say something that they don't like, or that they have written in the fine print of the 501c3, they can shut down that church building. Who really owns what? And you want to say that that building is a house of God? Oh, they're rendering tribute unto whom tribute is due. They have to sign up for a 501c, 501c3. No, no, they don't. It is not legally required that a church sign up with a 501c3. Nowhere in America is it legally required that they have to do that. But because they savor the things that be of men, and they want to be guaranteed their paycheck for filthy lucre's sake, they go and sign up with it. Because they were taught it in their Bible colleges. But they don't truly walk by faith, you see. They walk by sight. They want to have the documentation, the commendation for everything. Have it all laid out before them. And again, the whole thing, oh no man anything. <clears throat> Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Plain, and day, plain as day there, we're made free from all the things that be of this world, no longer having to abide according to the course of this world. Take Hannah and myself. Most people will go and have their child at a hospital. I gave birth, or she gave birth, and I delivered my son in our own bathroom. 
perfectly safe, perfectly healthy. If you haven't seen the testimony, go check it out. We don't have to go according to the course of this world. Follow after God in righteousness, truth, and faith. If you truly claim to be of God. And don't claim that things are of God, but then you have to do them according to the ordinances of man. Saying that you have to have these proper documentations, the 501c3, all this. It's spiritual fornication. You're yoking up with Mystery Babylon. You're yoking up with the Catholic Church, ultimately, in all of it. And when you go and attend at one of these church buildings, yes, you are just as guilty as it is that you're made drunk. The inhabitants, as it is in Revelation chapter 17, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Um, Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we as some other others epistles of commendation to you? Or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we, through Christ, to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God." who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Do you actually live by the Spirit? Or do you honor the things that be of men? Do you savor the things that be of men? Do you need approval of the things that be of men? Would you, are you more comfortable going to a church building that's yoked up with Mystery Babylon to hear the things of God, or would you be more comfortable to sit here with someone like myself or another born-again believer that doesn't go to a church building and sit there and study the Word of God for yourself? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. Are you actually studying to show thyself approved unto God? Or do you just go and, oh, well, my pastor gave a really good message and I, I really liked it. And you can talk about that message that Sunday, but until the next Sunday, and then it's in one ear and out the other. 2 Corinthians 10, 18. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. And if you really think that God has approved of the likes of Joel Olstein or, or John MacArthur or any other mega preacher anywhere that's known on the radio or TV or whatever have you, okay? <laughs> Do you think that they're really commended by the Lord? That which is highly esteemed amongst men is an abomination to God. Who's the mother of all abominations of the earth? It's really something, ain't it? Lastly, Romans 14. I hope that you're following what I'm saying, that you should not commit this spiritual fornication and yoke yourself up with the likes of these church buildings. Because yes, there's a, a fornication and getting in debt alone on itself that I talked about in uh, the mystery of Revelation, part 14 of the mysteries of God. <clears throat> that is true. But there's also a spiritual fornication that one can yoke themselves up spiritually with that that God is against. Thinking that they're doing God's service. Being con commended of men but not that of the Lord. And following others that are commended of men and highly esteemed amongst men, but are an abomination to God, for they savor the things that be of men and not of God. Just like Satan does. 
Romans chapter 14, verse 16 through 19. Let not your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that, is, that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may be may edify another excuse me one may edify another oh but see it's approved of men because it's accepted of god and it's in truth and sincerity ultimately what's going to be your direction let me read something else to you as I, I hope that it's been plainly obvious that these buildings that yoke themselves up with a 501c3 having their tax exemption nonsense that they're registered that when you put it in your phone and looking for a local church that their church building pops up <clears throat> and they have some big rich industrial person that comes in every Sunday and donates a bunch of money buco bucks right buco dollars in order to have a fat tax write-off at the end of the year because they have a 501c3 if they didn't have that and they were going a god's way they wouldn't be there they wouldn't donate romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. It's not always going to be easy. <sighs> Don't savor the things that be amen. Don't hold God's word in contempt when he gives certain commandments like dress modestly or abstain from fornication. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Oh, it's another one. Ephesians 5. I know what I'm thinking here, but it's not coming to mind. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, verse 11, Ephesians 5, 11. But there's many, many people that are committing fornication, spiritual fornication, thinking that they're following God, but really they're just following after the ordinances of men. Don't be caught up. Don't be one of those numbers. If you truly believe Jesus Christ and accepted him as your savior, that he died and rose again from the dead to make you a new creature. Why is though living? Are you living according to the ordinances of this world? Come out from among them and be ye separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll close here. All right, you know what? Keep your place here in 2 Corinthians 6. I got one other place I'd like to read. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. This only what I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If so be, it is it in vain. Chapter 2, verse 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness cometh by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Don't follow after those ordinances. You're following after the law and your own thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Who are you living for? 
Are you living your life a living sacrifice for the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you living your life a living sacrifice for your pastor at so-and-so Baptist church or Pentecostal church or whatever? They all have their faults one way or another according to the word of God. And notwithstanding, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Are they yoked up? Are they committing fornication with Mystery Babylon? Do they have these agreements, these pacts, these terms by a 501c3? They're literally signing it into law that they are yoked up with the government, signing over their church building, the house of God, over to the, the government to look over and supersede that it'll take care of them if hard times come and that they can dictate what they can say and not say, the government that is, and these church buildings, they willingly want to go and do it. It is not required of them to do that. They are committing willfully spiritual fornication. They are unbelievers. They are a part of the unrighteousness. And why are you having communion with them if you're going to these church buildings? Verse 15, and what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty." And might it be so that you are encouraged to come out from among them? You might be surprised how much walking by faith will do for you. And how, many, how you might have favor of God in the days to come if you are genuinely, in all sincerity and truth, walking according to God's perfect will, approving what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, living your life a living sacrifice and being separate from the fornication and the filth of Mystery Babylon. I hope this study was a blessing and eye-opening to you, and I guess that's that then. Thank you for watching. Bye now.